Hello and welcome back to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're going to be playing some more The Thaumaturge. Now, we've just arrived in Warsaw. We're still at the station platform. Uh, I don't think there'll be a lot to do here, but you never know. Um, we can definitely have a look at the sign, though, that's been defaced. People unite. Empires fall. Uh, so it would say Var... I can't... Uh, Varsava, I think. I studied Russian in school. I don't remember a lot of it. I remember a few bits, but I remember the uh, the alphabet, how that sounds. I also remember the Russian for elephant, randomly, which is slon. <laughs> Gem knowledge for the day. Uh, this is all fenced off, so let's uh, let's head down into the station. That one of the few phrases I can remember, which I don't think we were ever taught. I think I probably pieced it together myself. Was ya lublinumnia slon, which means I love my elephant, <laughs> very, which has been very useful to me in life, as you can imagine, over the last. Ooh, nearly 30 years I've remembered that for now. So the Warsaw Courier, their majesties have arrived. When this issue of the Courier is in your hands, the ancient city of Warsaw will be receiving its most distinguished guests. His Majesty Nikolai II, the Emperor of all Russia, the King of Poland and the Grand Duke of Finland and Her Royal Highness, Tsarina Alexandra Fyodorovna, will arrive in our city this afternoon. Now Nikolai II, was he... Um was he the Tsar during the uh, Russian Revolution? I mean, I guess so, because that's contemporary to Rasputin, wasn't it? So, um, yeah, I, I guess that's the case. This will be the royal couple's first visit to Warsaw. On this long-awaited and joyous occasion, our city has taken up a festive appearance. Streets have been adorned with festoons of flowers and greenery, and the entire area that the royal procession will pass through is filled with crowds of people wishing to pay homage to their majesties on behalf of Warsaw and all of the kingdom. And with that vow of loyal allegiance, Polish hearts sent, send to the throne a quiet echo of fervent desires and lasting comfort. These arise from His Majesty's words, who declared in his grand manifestos that his ultimate goal was to ensure the happiness of all his loyal subjects, and to discern all his loyal subjects' needs. Those gracious words of the Sovereign have become a source of comfort for the people of the Kingdom of Poland, I'm sure they did. And in that name, uh, sorry, and in the name of that comfort, the Polish people under Russian rule are happy to greet His Majesty today, trusting their substantial needs will be recognised and ready for civic and public service. Yeah, that's very much the uh, loyalist news publication, I would guess. I wonder if we'll see a more um, Bolshevik one. Rev oh. <laughs> Right on cue, revolutionary leaflets. Brothers, the 11-hour workdays are killing us. Oof, 11-hour workdays. Let's follow the example of the workers in German and English factories and fight to reduce them to nine working hours. Join the strike. Put down your tools and join the fight for our future. Uh, so we can't go down there. Just kind of doing like a sort of a circular lap of the... The station, just to see what's here. What we got? Menu. Uh, for the Kastalanska restaurant. Borscht or broth? Fruit soup? Pottage. Pottage or pottage? Pot I, it being English, I'd probably say pottage. With crayfish, goose in jelly, young turkey. Romaine lettuce, pan-seared saffron milk cups. Cucumber salad. Compote. Cream with chocolate. Pears a la Otero. Don't know what that is. Cup, cup of green gauges. Mocha, black coffee, local lager, English porter, portioned caviar and snacks. Yeah, I think that's supposed to be a fairly posh menu. <laughs> that lady say, I have a husband, go away. <laughs> I was only reading the menu, lady. Not in a particularly suggestive way, either. Okay, so that's where the newspaper was. Oh, hello. Ah. Oh no, that's a door. Oh, I thought that was uh, like a notice board or something. Anyway, Act 1. The city that does not forget. Why is there a crowd? The circus has come to town. Oh, I'm also playing Death Trick Double Blind at the, the same time, so that, that gets a bit close. Turn against brothers. Russia has had enough bloodshed. The violence must stop. When socialists attempt to divide Russia and her subject nations, to dent the sword that smote the enemy at Grunwald, this demands my decisive action. 
Thus, by my grace, I hereby appoint as Governor General of Warsaw Georgi Antonovich Skawon. A butcher. Yeah, let's ask about him. Not a popular guy, I presume. I see you ain't from here. That swine keeps a photo album of all the folks he's had shot at the Citadel. Oof. Before and after execution. Warsaw! The time for leniency and indulgence is over! From the moment this office is bestowed on me, no forces hostile to the subjects of Greater Russia will have any further right to exist! None! Whether it be brutal socialist subversives, communists, Jews, or other satanic provocators! The shoe knows how to unite a crowd. Pardon me, are you Polish? Uh, yes. Yes, I feel Polish. My name's Victor. Wanda. This is Russia here. Like it or not? Warsaw! Premia Terora! Zakoizos! Iti na chuj! My first decision as Governor General of Warsaw. Kill everyone. Arrest Arrest that man, I guess. Or beat him senseless, possibly. Are we gonna get involved? Great heroes and their sense of timing. Of course, now they're the first ones in the fight. Samo Bladanie, Puriaki. We want that rebel. The Loudmouth. Damn. What happened? Be a gentleman. Please kneel and tie my shoe. Uh. Now, uh, okay, so I was reading a little bit about this flaws system, uh, mainly in the Steam comments, uh, forum comments, and while I've been sort of feeding this law of pride, there are benefits and side effects of strengthening this. Apparently you can raise it up to such a level where decisions kind of get taken out of your hand, like he becomes so proud of himself, that, uh, or so filled with pride, that he'll just kind of take the reins in just key decisions. Um, but equally, apparently with low pride, it can have a similar effect where you're just unable to take certain responses because he's uh, so lacking in any sort of self-pride. Self, uh, um, so it's interesting. It seems like there's a bit of a balance to play. Now, I've taken most of the pride... Um, uh, options so far, but perhaps I ought to be a little more measured about that seeing as there are definite p Positives, but also negatives importantly, so let's let's for now Neil. I didn't dare suggest it myself I think she's got a reason for this A gun in her uh... Oh. Can I ask you a tiny favor? The Russians can't find out about this. The military is just looking for an excuse to suppress the crowd, and these workers are dreaming of thrashing a Russian gendarme. Either one of you confesses to disturbing the peace, or of Sieg Zabirai. We'll take you all in. You can't handle all of us. Can you get us out of here? Uh, what are you suggesting? I think I'm open to any kind of suggestion. With a book like that? I find out what would convince one of these bastards to let us go. Or I'd take on that self-appointed leader of the proletariat. Interesting strategy. Who is she? Who are you, really? A damsel in distress. Those don't usually hide. I reckon she's uh stockings. She's a revolutionary. Can I explain it to you another time? Uh Okay, I guess we'll leave. I'm going to take a look around. Okay, so not directly in a combat situation, but we're we've got to get out of this. Oh, it's a kettling incident. Interesting. That's what they. That's what the riot police in I know in London do. When things get a bit feisty. We've kind of been locked up in a, like a pressure cooker type situation. So first of all, let's do this. 
so that feels like there is something to discover here. Those sort of bigger things here are usually, yeah. Police barrier. A police barrier meant to help with keeping order during the rally. The seemingly ordinary barrier carries the memory of a hand whose firm grip represents the determination of the one who controls it. It was the gendarme commander who set up the barrier, carrying in his heart a desire to return to the warmth of his home. All he needed was a scapegoat. Is there one another one? Aha, what's this? Pistol bullets, aha. Bullets that fell from under the woman's dress scattered on the pavement. Small bullets carry big emotions. Hope, because they were meant to benefit the cause. Fear, which in these difficult times makes its way even to the hardiest of hearts. And determination, the companion of courage, without which it would be impossible to face reality. Uh, we know it's Wanda's style, and we saw them, saw them come, come out of her under her shoe, didn't we? Each bullet was hidden in the nooks and crannies of the undergarments with care and precision, just like the previous time and the time before that. This is nothing new for the person who took the risk. Okay. I think that's probably it for this little area. Um, so we could speak to people. Um, let's talk to the corporal first. Pardon me, gentlemen. The crowd has received the order. For now, zero response. We'll give them a moment to arrest them all, book them, interrogate them. Gospody will be home in November. Gentlemen, please forgive me. Maybe there's a faster way to get this situation resolved. Back off, Poriak, or we'll start shooting. Paniatno, Scrum, Dovoy. Okay, so just to say, gendarme readiness. They're ready to pacify the crowd. They won't hesitate to arrest those who draw their attention. Uh, so we've acquired the knowledge or context required to give a response. This is a proud answer. We could hand wander over. We're not going to do that. Uh, let's leave for now. I don't really want to do either of any of those things. Um, let's instead talk to the uh, workers' leader over here. Do you think it's a good idea to stir people up and send them to face bullets and bayonets? What do you want then? My whole life on my knees? Kissing Ruski's ass? Do you want bloodshed here? Do you realize blood is about to be spilled? And that it might be mine? I'm sure he cares about that. Worker leader. The worker's leader is a, char a charismatic man, apparently, whose words will greatly move the crowd. He will not keep quiet, even if it means ending up in a cell. Okay. Manhunt at the station. The sergeant wants to call it a day and go home as fast as possible. Manhunt entails a lot of work that he'd rather avoid. A little nudge, he might settle for taking in the agitators and letting the rest go. The worker's leader is perfect for that role. Okay. Oh, hello. Bukovac has turned up. What are, you up? what are you doing? We could manipulate the guy. Okay. Did the corporal tell you we're going to shoot? Okay, let's get, <laughs> give up the worker then, I suppose. It doesn't feel... I don't feel great about it, but he did tell me to F off, so... <laughs> the stottage now. Should we go in and capture the worker who's mouthing off and let the rest go? We can use anyone as an example. Shagom March! Goodbye. You're welcome. I wanted to thank you at our next meeting. We could use someone like you. We? Meaning the people you were carrying ammunition for and who got your Dutch pomade for your hair? You haven't just got pretty eyes, you know how to use them. Maybe you'll find time one day for some jam donuts at Burke Rotblitz's? Sounds nice. Okay, so we're out of there anyway. Another meeting. Fearless Wanda, the smuggler of bullets, proposed a meeting at Burke Rotblitz's. Okay. The woman I met during the Kettling incident was smuggling bullets in the nooks and crannies of her undergarments. Clearly it wasn't the first time she'd done that. Unfortunately, this time the garter didn't hold and the bullets fell onto the pavement. Maybe fate will have us cross paths again and we'll meet at Burke for Blitzes for jam donuts. Maybe. Our story quest, though, is to go to our father's funeral at the Poazki Cemetery. And I do apologise for any incorrect Polish pronunciation in this series because I find it one of the harder languages to sort of know how to pronounce just from the spellings. I think that's probably Powazki or 
Pavesky, something like that. Um, but anyway, be sure to let me know in the comments if and how I'm doing it wrong, um, which is probably going to be a fair amount. Um, so we want to go up there, but I, th I think it's, I don't know how open world it is, but I think it re is reasonably open world. I think we can probably explore a little bit to the edges of the maps before we commit to pursuing the main story. Or maybe we should just go, oh, catch a tram. I mean, that would probably, t yeah, I mean, that's, I wonder if the arrow up there was for another tram station. I'll probably do that, but I just want to kind of go over here first and see if I can. Oh, hello. There is some stuff over here. The Kurja Voslovsky. I don't know what that means. What is it? Looks like it could be a bar or a restaurant or something. What's this? Poster. Inaugural concert of the Warsaw Philharmonic. Uh, Ignacy Jan Paradovsky will perform with Emil... Oh, goodness, I have no idea what letter that is. Milnyaski conducting the orchestra. After the concert, a reception will be held at the Cronenberg Palace. Okay. Getting all that juicy experience. It's quite a big map, actually, isn't it? I mean... I, I wonder how much there actually is for us to do here, because I haven't really got any other quests or anything yet. What's this? Com... Commissariat Politica... There could be, an, could be an embassy of some kind. Oh, pl pl the police station. Do I want to go into the police station just yet? Probably not. I have a feeling we're not exactly friends of the police. Another locked place. I don't... There might be a day and night cycle. Maybe some of these things open at particular times of day. There's nothing on this screen right now to suggest to me there's like a time of day thing going on. Propaganda brochure. The sewers of the city of Warsaw is a tool used by Judaism and charlatans to destroy Polish agriculture and exterminate the Slavic population living by the Vistula River. Ooh, okay. Uh, that's just crazy, crazy talk, I think. Um, I'll take it for the XP, though. I think I lost my bearings now. There is, I mean, there is a map, of course. Okay, carriage. Carriage marked off. The mermaids, oh, that's, is that the, I think they're saying we're just by a tram station. Where am I? Oh, that's me, is it? It's another carriage there. Can I... Okay, Imperial Hotel, locked. Apartment 213. Stuff. Some stuff's locked, but some stuff isn't. Maybe we can go... Yeah, I don't know. So, I don't think there's anything up here. Yeah, that's sort of invisible walls, fair enough. That's locked. What about these carriages that are marked on the map? It could just... They, I mean, they could just be... The carriages could just be fast travel points, to be honest. And probably are. It, yeah, it does look like it, doesn't it? What's this thing, though? Ball card. Carnival ball at the public casino. Okay. I guess I'll take that. I'd quite like to try and get into the hotel in that apartment that were not said to be locked on the map. I don't know if I can set waypoints down. It actually says noon, so maybe there is a bit of a time thing going on. Okay, so if I just go directly across the road from where I am now... Ah, it might be blocked off currently. Yeah, I th think this half of the map might currently be blocked off. Try. There is a tram stop down there anyway, but I'm just going to see if I can get in. So that, that seems to be the Imperial Hotel. But, um... Oh, maybe I can get there this way. Ah. Yeah, okay, so that is that is locked. <laughs> the exterior door is locked. Alright, let's get a cab to the cemetery then. Let's 
seem to be spending quite a lot of time in cemetery so far. So is the map, we don't have to push back any fog of war then for the map, it kind of just tells us where everything is. The point of interest down the road, so maybe we'll head there first. Something going on up there. I have a husband go away. It's, uh, oh, we can drink some hot chocolate. Uh, okay, let's have a look. Uh, advertisement. Men's tailor, Rock Dobrudski. Accepts all manner of tailing work, offering the lowest possible prices, blah, blah, blah. 11 Prosna Street. Okay. But anyway, let's, uh, why don't we have some hot chocolate. A sweet aftertaste with a hint of bitterness. A postcard from the overseas world, where the song of heavenly birds meets the rattle of slave chains. Ooh. Okay. We got XP for that. I'm not going to mind having a hot chocolate and getting XP in a thaumaturgy point. Uh, that's probably fast travel, isn't it? Okay. Let me probably head up to the cemetery now and see what was going on. That big crowd of people. Excuse me, may I? I need to get to a funeral. He's a tempermancer. Don't let him through. Okay, so I'm going to force my way through or use a pride answer. Uh, I'm going to use a pride answer. I'm asking you kindly, get out of my way before things get nasty. Get that heretic with fire and sword. That butler's a bit feisty. Goodness. Notice he's not fighting himself. Oof. Look at all that focus. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just start the fire. I'm going to save my Thaumaturgy point for now. Selecting yourself a Salutor. You can preview both your and your Salutor skill. This will help you plan your attack. You can summon another Salutor at any time. A green frame around the Salutor's image means they're exceptionally effective in a fight with the given enemy. Read the description above the Salutor to find out why they will be useful at that moment. Okay. So it's saying Bukovac. Focus deprivation would be more effective against this enemy. Alright, what about this one? Damage based attacks would be more. Yeah, it says both of them. I might use Bukovac on that one. Let's stick with uh, Upira for this one. Um, yeah, let's reduce this. Both reduces focus. I think we'll be able to get another one. And then Upir. Do a big attack. Now I can get in a concussion. So between the two of us, we might do alright. Oop. There he goes. Oof, we're taking quite a bit of damage there. So let's switch now to uh, Book of Arch. What have we got? Howl. Uh, if the enemy's health points is at or less than 50%, well, it's not. Bloody wedding. Inflicts damage equal to weight for each enemy affected by suffering. We don't have any of that yet. A doom inflicts uh, damage. The lower the enemy's health points, the faster skill. Okay, well, it's quite... It's quite high health at the moment, but maybe if I take my action first. 50% chance of interrupting the planned action and, ca and cast suffering. So actually, if I do that, and then his one, what was that one about suffering? So you just do eight damage. Maybe we could put double suffering on him. It 
does, yeah, he's got... So he'll be taking 8 damage around, okay. Um, so my action... Uh... Might as well do another one of these. Well... Yeah, I'm going to pop another one of that on. And let's do... Because I don't... It says per enemy affected by suffering, but I wonder if the number of stacks has an effect. So let's see that. Do a quick one. <laughs> he's hitting hard. Enemy reinforcements are on the way, it says. Oh, but he's dead. We may have... Oh. Oh, the butler's coming in with a gun. Traits. Enemies can have a trait that makes them immune to your attacks. Traits are related to different dimensions, and they can be disabled. Okay. To disable an enemy's trait, attack them with a salutor that belongs to the same dimension as the trait. Note that if you don't have the required dimension force, you can still take away all of the opponent's focus and launch a strong attack. Okay. So what, um, what's this saying? He's, uh, linked to Upir. Let's do that. A lot of focus. I don't think we'll bother with the focus stuff. Um, but let's do a quick attack, maybe. Or as quick as we can. These are both the same, but this one will actually heal us a bit as well. Uh, this one. Yeah, I'm going to do the planned attack, because that'll happen after his trait's been disabled. Giving us about 10 HP. Wow. Okay. That was good. Then he got 10 left now, so... Um, I was thinking both Upir's ones are going to be a bit slow. Uh, what if we go to Book of Arch? So that'll happen. Oh, that's a howl. Yes, because he's low on health, so that'll be good. So Book of Atra is like quite a good finisher of enemies. Yikes. That was so enchanting. <laughs> enchanting behavior. Scal in a puffed out chest, and them dropping like flies in the blink of an eye, collapsing on their own, becoming delirious. Extraordinary. Constantia Shabowska, the Warsaw Courier. Would you care to give me an interview? Thank you, but I'm already late. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's take a quick look at these things. Parish announcements. Votive service in honour of Our Lady the Rosary for the intention of the brothers and sisters of the confraternity of the Holy Rosary. Holy Mass, la la la. Okay, and well, I'm going to read all this stuff even if I don't end up reading it all aloud just to get the XP for it. Obituary notice for the late Franciszek Ilmantel went to the... Be with the Lord, following brief yet painful agony, having received the sacraments at the age of 65. The bereaved family is asking all relatives and friends to join them at the funeral service uh, held at St. Anna's Church, blah, 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 followed by the transfer of the body to the family tomb at Pawaski Cemetery. So is that... I guess that's our dad, isn't it? I didn't know that our second name was Hillmantel. I don't think we've... Yeah, I don't think we found out. No, it was... Um... Victor's surname was uh, Slimansky or something like that, wasn't it? I can't remember exactly what his name was. Began with S, though. Ah, this is it. Shulsky. Stanislav Shulsky. Widely respected citizen, thaumaturge, philanthropist, entrepreneur, father and husband. Died suddenly at the age of 64. Service will be held, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's our dad. Tomb for Maria Wisnowska, Polish stage artist. Okay. Here lies Jan Kmieliak, our dear friend. Okay, I wonder if sometimes in games like this, when you have a big cemetery with stones, you can read they like can be the names of the developers and stuff, or or uh, you know 
game supporters or backers in some way. I don't know if that, I don't know if that's the case here. Graf Friedrich Karl Nisselrod. Okay. Where else am I going? I think I think our funeral's back behind us. I'm just checking things out up here, I guess. Right, let's head back. Mr. Shulsky, okay. I'm sure you don't remember me. My name's Hayat, Mordecai Hayat. I wanted to offer my condolences. Thank you. Please, forgive my prying. I know Mr. Shulsky took nitroglycerin for his heart, but how did he pass away? Was that his cause of death? His heart? <laughs> um... We, honestly, we don't know. I'm curious myself. I haven't had a chance to find out. Yes, I, I understand. My condolences, once again. I'll leave you alone. I'm sure you want to bid farewell to your father. Okay, well, I guess we go in. I knew you'd turn up. I wouldn't miss this for the world. Stasha loved you in his own way. You look well. Lydia said you found some quack healer. Yes, sir. Uh, thank, thank you. You don't recognize me, do you? But do you remember who taught you how to shoot starlings? Uncle Voronin, I'm, I'm sorry. Don't worry, I probably wouldn't recognize myself anymore. Go look in on your sister, she's worried. We'll talk at home. Sister? Victor. I'm so glad you came. I wasn't sure if my telegram had reached you. I'm glad to. How are you holding up? All this caught me off guard, but... For now, I don't have time to think things through calmly. Have you written to Mother? Yes, but... What can you expect? You know what Nadia is like. It was never her style to show up for family events like this. It's getting late. And we've still got the reading of Papa's will ahead of us at home. And I'll leave you two alone. I suppose you've got your own matters to clear up. Okay. Um, alright, well, let's stay to say goodbye. Fine, let's get this over with. So, it was me who got it right in the end. Back then, on the train platform, was the last time we saw one another. Fifteen years ago. Uh, we can read the obituary, I suppose. After brief suffering fell asleep in the Lord. Brief? I hope not. Did you write this yourself? A tyrant, bigot, and liar, mistakenly absorbed, died after suffering all too briefly. Mm. That's better, and definitely closer to the truth. Now, let's mention the dream. The day you died, you visited me in my dreams. I was a child when you hounded me out of here, and I remember you as you were back then. But in my dream, you looked older. He gave me hell as usual. You didn't believe I'd succeed. You were wrong. 
have come back with two salutars. Uh, okay, let's leave. Farewell, father. Doesn't sound like there was any love lost. Am I intruding? Yeah, we're going to try and restrict the pride answers uh, as much as we can. Have you been eavesdropping like that for long? <laughs> All my life, I came to pay my respects to the dead. Stanislav and I were acquainted. You might say I knew everything about your father. Mr. Viktor Shulsky, isn't it? Your absence from Warsaw has happily come to an end, I hope. Uh, we haven't made up our minds yet. I haven't had time to think about it. I understand. I hope you'll find some reason to stay here a little longer. Again, my condolences. I didn't catch your name. My name's Konechkin. Ivan Konechkin. Goodbye. Such interesting friends you had. <sighs> I, I guess I'm more tired than I thought. Yeah, we're going to go home next. Hohenloch. Bouquet with a note. A few flowers gathered together in a note. You were closer to me than I could ever admit, and now you're gone. My heart is yearning. S. Oh, uh, these simple words contain a sea of sadness and longing. The letter was written with a trembling heart that cannot come to terms with the loss. It seems that someone was greatly affected by my father's death. Not Victor, clearly. Someone's left a note next to the simple wreath. We had our differences regarding methods, but we shared the same goal. We will carry on, and you rest in peace, brother. Your friends in Thaumaturgy. Okay. Someone has left an unusual note by the generic funeral wreath. Eat dirt, Shilsky. In blunt terms, it expresses joy about Stanislav's death. The wreath was thrown carelessly, but some time and effort went into the words in the note. Several versions were written, all of which seemed insufficiently offensive to the author. In the end, he decided on the simple yet eloquent Eat dirt, Shilsky. More people than I would have guessed came to say their farewells to Father. It turns out that he had both friends who were clearly affected by his death, and enemies who found it exceptionally pleasing. Well, it seems Father evoked extreme emotions in the people he'd encountered during his life. Hmm. Uh, we've got two Thaumaturgy points, so let's just have a quick look at this. So... Um... I'm, I'm, is there more, I'm wondering if there's more off to the uh, the right here. I, oh, I can scroll. Oh, have, have a look at that. Yeah, okay. Cool. There is quite a lot of stuff to do then. Um, well, increase the damage from the Sally Tool's next attack by 50%. Pretty good, that. Okay, well, let's develop that. Um... Us, because we don't have salutors there. We can't actually increase those at all. Action, reaction, inflicts damage. That could be quite good. Maybe, we'll, maybe we will take that. Uh, okay. Yeah, I can imagine we'll probably do that a reasonable amount. Okay. Right. Well, let's uh, let's not hang around too long then. Let's go. Let's go home.
We can go. The hardest thing was getting the lid of the urn. The scattering I could handle. You can play the clown, but I know how much this has cost you. I'm glad you went. Love at a funeral? Eros postmortem? Is it suitable for a young lady in mourning to fraternize with bachelors? Konstantia Shabowska, the Warsaw Courier. Could I ask for a brief comment? Faina. Thank you. And you, sir? Yeah. We're twins, my dear lady. The Shulskis reunited. You don't look like a horrid cripple. Why did you leave Warsaw so quickly? Don't tell her anything. She'll write whatever she wants anyway. And we'd better get going. I can sort it out, but it might cause you some trouble. It's not worth getting your hands dirty over. Get out of here! Or I might decide you're attacking an Imperial official. And you'll wake up tomorrow in the Citadel. Are you threatening me, Judge? I'm actually spurring you from him. Would you rather try your luck with a Tomaturg? Come on, children. I'm sure my Pietia is already waiting for us at home. I'd love to see my cousin. Are you coming with us? Uh, yeah. Thanks. Get in. I'm sure the lawyer is already waiting for us. Follow them, I suppose. I'm walking a lot quicker than they are. Actually, I don't know, I don't know if there is sort of like a, a toggle walk button. I haven't found it yet. I have been trying a few keys. Miss, your guests have arrived. The lawyer's upstairs too, waiting. But try for jittery. Wonder if the tea I made him was too strong. Thank you, Grazina, dear. Let the guests wait. First, I want to take care of the will. I'll just wet my whistle and join you all upstairs. Make sure Uncle makes it upstairs sober. And I'll suggest you don't dawdle either. Master Victor, good God! Half your face covered, but I could tell right away it was you. You look just like your father in his youth. Completely his spitting image. Should I make you some cocoa, Master? It would warm you up a little. Uh, let's make some for sister. Make an extra creamy one for Ligia. Oh, I won't skimp on her. Now, your sister's putting a brave face on all this, but she's really having a hard time. It's lovely to see you again. But that's enough jabber for now. I've got the guests and the cocoa, and I've got to whip up some food for you all later. We'll talk soon. Okay. Uh, so up upstairs is where we meet the lawyer and talk about the will, I guess. So we've got... That's probably the door we came in, right? Um, so we got a garden out there. We'll, we'll, we'll explore this map, I think, before we move on to another one. I like the way he's saying, apparently, Victor's home, and I'm standing right here. <laughs> oh, this picture of Dad. Dear old Dad. Father's portrait. The portrait depicts Father in his twilight years. The serious expression on his face, the proud posture, and the grimoire in his hand, combined with a dark background and lack of embellishments. It all reflects the strictness and pragmatism he always had. Good old Stanislav. However, a faint red streak can be seen around his figure. Apparently artists are particularly sensitive to seeing things that usually escape the human eye. This one should receive double emu emolument for capturing the thaumaturgic aura. Oh, got another thaumaturgy point, not very close to it. Who's this? Petya Vodanin. Um, so he's my cousin, I guess? I don't want to put my foot in my mouth again. I already failed to recognize someone once today, but you look familiar. Well, I should think so. 
I was the victim of one of your starling hunts. Voronins must not be very memorable, cousin. Pietia, <laughs> forgive me, and for shooting you as well. Ha, huh. how are you doing? Just some heart problems, not a subject for today. I'm sorry about Uncle Stanislav. Forgive me for not coming to the funeral. I can't bear cemeteries. We'll have to meet up again. Goodbye. Okay. The Warsaw Courier, evening extra. Is this anything? Ah, oh, this is about the, uh, the, the new governor guy. A moment after our gracious emperor announced that Georgi Skalon is the new governor general of Warsaw, a group of troublemakers started yelling the most disgraceful slogans. Despite reinforced security, there was a scuffle. The gendarmerie were quick to get to the situation under control, however. A few people were injured, including two policemen who came to help. Thirty people charged with public nuisance and brawling were taken into custody. Hmm. What's this? Basement. Like I said, we'll explore the other stuff before we go upstairs, but I would like to explore the fullness of this map first. 365 dinner recipes for five zlotties by Lusnia C. Capon or pull it with sausages. Well, I'm not going to read the whole recipe, but... <laughs> I will take the uh, XP. Graz Grazinia's liqueur recipe. Okay. Gathering some food tips here. His uncle. Getting, getting oh, sloshed. I'm glad you're here. I thought I'd have to drink alone. So many goodies laid out for the guests. Having trouble picking something for yourself, Judge? But this was Stasio's. It was special. Amber liqueur with quinces. I think you mean quince liqueur with amber, right? If it's not here, I'm sure it's in the basement. But I won't grope around down there in the dark now. I've got my hands full. Now, I don't want to trouble you either. Victor, could you track down a little bottle for your uncle? I suppose I'm obligated to accept this mission. <laughs> Good lad. A nephew like you is a treasure. Okay, well that's given us a reason to go to the basement, I suppose. Have a look at this thing first. Bust of Morana. The stern countenance resembles that of a human, but the callous gaze shows no trace of human emotions. The Queen of Winter scrutinizes you, sending a shiver down your spine. Maybe it think, makes me think of the words, if you gaze long enough into an abyss, the abyss will gaze back into you. I don't know if I've done this around all areas of the house just to sort of see if there's anything hidden, but... Is that it? Pinot Noir from Oregon. Bottle of red wine from the US. Hard to get. Uh, this is from Ligia. An inability to articulate, brought on by great surprise, clings to the bottle. It was difficult to mouth even a word of gratitude for the unique gift. Words got stuck in the throat despite an adoration for this particular liquor. It is a favourite beverage, but an unwelcome gift. Oh, okay, interesting. Hmm. What else have we got? Mother's portrait. A portrait of mother from her youth. She stands proud, wearing a white dress and a silk scarf thrown over exposed shoulders. A long, dark hair flows down her back, and she glances at the viewer with a piercing smile. Bare skin and a frivolous hairstyle. That's not how I remembered her. Nadia is a young, unkempt maiden. It's hard to believe. This shocking vision of the painter must have been created in a previous era. A time when hearts were stirred with violent emotions. Poems were created to the sound of a storm. Love stories had to end tragically, etc. Father actually commissioned such a painting? Doesn't seem his staff, what we know of him. Quince liqueur. Uh, this is Voronin's. The bottle exudes the sweet aroma of quince and the, sis and the sincere joy of the upcoming meeting. It is a beverage that brings people together and sweetens the bitterness of everyday life. An element of a ritual that two old friends would eagerly indulge in. Okay, well, we've got what we came down for, but there's uh, something else here. Sauvignon de Bordeaux. De Bordeaux. A bottle of white wine from southern France, an expensive beverage popular among the aristocracy. This is a familiar trace, mysterious woman. So that's the, is he referring to the revolutionary? 
or just someone we haven't met yet. The wine carries the aroma of peaches, apples, and a certain amount of conviction that a relationship between two people is beginning to take on a romantic edge. A beverage enjoyed by the upper crust, given to a man by a woman. Every bottle found in the Zhilsky cellar contains a creditable beverage. Uncle Voronin wouldn't disregard any of them. Okay. Let's head back up. How did it go? Mission accomplished? Uh, well, we'll give him the, uh, the liqueur that he asked for, shall we? I think this is the one Uncle wanted. Yes. This is our little funeral battle. We would meet in Stasha's study after every funeral we went to, and raise a toast to the dead. And recently... We've been seeing one another more and more at such events. More and more. But this time, even he has left me. So? To an easy death, as Stasha and I used to say. <laughs> How did he die? Hasn't Ligia told you? I haven't even had the chance to ask. He didn't suffer. But such images in the memory are better saved for later. I'd prefer to remember him as he was alive. What then? Am I drinking alone? Uh, let's drink to an easy death. I suppose there's no reason to bear grudges or be angry, is there? To Stasio? To an easy death. Familiar faces keep vanishing from my life. Stasio and my Helena before him. I miss my little darling. I miss them both. Well, obligation fulfilled. Shall we get to the reading of the will? Uh, let's ask about that guy in the in the uh, cemetery, Shaza Shai Shahat. There was this sad Jewish fellow, Mordechai Hayat. Hayat. Do you know him, Uncle? He worked for Stanislav, but that was a long time ago. I don't know him more than that. So, shall we collect our inheritance? You'll all have to wait for me a moment yet. All right, but hurry up. I just want to pop into the garden quickly and see what's out there. Oh, what's this? Oh, um, I'm okay for now. Not a lot out here. I thought, I thought it was worth checking, but it's fine. Let's go and do the will. Bust of Sirin. Sharp avian features bear a wild, disturbing kind of beauty. They make you want to fall into her clutches and be lulled into an eternal dream by her sweet song. Yet her cryptic, slight smile makes a subconscious, primal part of your being cower away from the predator. But isn't a soul the only fair price for the bliss of giving yourself up to this enchanting creature? Is this my room? Notice there's a wardrobe thing. Serious photo. Straight backs, stern expressions, noses in the air. Two boys that are just trying to meet everyone's expectations. Something went wrong here. Is that um, father and uncle, I wonder? Ooh, let's have a look at our wardrobe, shall we? Uh, oh, I don't have... Uh, I, guess, I guess I'm wearing everything I own at the moment. <laughs> but maybe we can uh, we can gain other, other clothes and um, get changed at some point. Oh, I should have clicked the fingers in the bedroom. Oh, interesting... Uh, <laughs> toilet reading. Pseudomonarchia daemonum. 
Compared to Alistair Crowley's Ars Gertia, there are three fewer demons. No evidence that all demons are salutors. Bathim, a false lead. Pucel, a false lead. Anton claims to have subjugated Oribas, mere boasting. Marcosius, expected to take the form of a wolf with the wings of a griffin and the tail of a snake. According to Duplancy, he takes the form of a wild lioness. Interesting observation by Crowley, demons are unexplored fragments of our minds. However, in appearance, it resembles an ox with wings. A lead for Sabnok, unknown. Interesting. I'm going to go back in the bedroom and I'm going to do the clicky fingers thing. Just in case I missed anything in here. Doesn't seem like it. Fair enough. Message from Mother. Dear child, stop. It is with great sorrow that I have received news of Stanislav's death. Stop. Unfortunately, I will not be able to attend the funeral ceremony. Stop. My duties in Paris keep me from travelling to Warsaw at this time. Stop. I join you both in mourning and sorrow. Stop. Mama. My letter from Rome, July 1896. So that's nine years ago. Dear sister, I'm writing to you because sleep eludes me. As I wrote before, I have found a suitable candidate. However, I'm still struggling to reach his floor. I feel that Paimon is within my reach. I even saw him. Vaguely, but I did. I'll stop here because my nerves prevent me from continuing. W. P.S. Yes, I will be careful. Don't think me a fool like father. Polish Gazette. Just mentions father's death. My letter from Paris, November 1896. Sister of mine, I feel well enough to write something to you. The doctor also recommended I do so. I'm not alone in my anguish. I share a room with one Reeford Morton, whose last name escapes me. What? They brought him in from London, from Dr. Seward's clinic. A very interesting case. He spends his days hunt hunting for the moths, cockroaches, ladybugs and beetles that come here sometimes. He eats them. He says it gives him strength to wait for the coming of the Lord, but I don't think he means the saviour. I cannot yet reconstruct all the details after the deb debacle with Paimon. My mind is still in tatters. Paimon visited me no more than a week ago. I know that's impossible. It probably happened only in my mind, but it was so clear. He, as the king of hell with this host of demons, with the shadows of his penitence, called for me to join them. It was so real. I'll stop here. I'm having a hard time gathering my thoughts. I wonder if this is uh, um, a reference to Renf Renfield um, from Dracula. Hang on. Places to be. I just want to check this uh, thing there, then we'll... Uh... Zulski family portrait. Our family portrait. I can remember when it was taken. The year was 1884, and Ligia and I were nine years old at the time. She was clearly tense, and I remember how Mother admonished her not to smile, not to fidget, and to stand straight. Ligia was to take the cue from her. Mother was able to freeze like a statue and sit there, barely breathing for a couple of hours. I, on the other hand, posed nonchalantly. Posing nonchalantly was always more unrestrained than my sister. I could get away with more. Behind us, our father, the head of the family. One hand resting patronisingly on the back of the chaise longue, asserting his ownership. The other holding a grimoire, the black grimoire. Behind father, a shadow, as if a shape was emerging and forming, indicating another presence. That's Balbareth. The family is complete. Mm. I might look that up in the journal, actually. Balbareth. Uh, hello. My father's first salutor, probably not the only one. A perfect match. An ancient idol mentioned in the Book of Judges. Secretive by nature, keeper of vegetation and master of insects that he can command in order to protect people from diseases. According to Ars Gostia, Balbareth belongs to a circle of greater demons, just like, fa just like father. The flaws that attract him are, much like with the Upir, those related to the heart dimension and the sensations of the heart. Pride, blasphemy, contentiousness, but also consistency, stubbornness and ambition. Balbareth is gone. He left with my father. Where? We do not know what happens to Salutors after a Thaumaturge's death. Perhaps they become wild again, unhindered by the pact with their master. But maybe the flaw that used to tether them is gone, so maybe they vanish into the void as well. Hmm. Okay, let's go do the will then. I think I've poked into every corner that I can. 
I am ready, Mr. Shulsky. I only need all of you to be present. Can we start treating your father's will? Yes. Yes. Let his will be done. Begin. Let's begin if everyone is ready. Would you all please take a seat? Ladies and gentlemen, by the power of my office vested in me by the grace of His Imperial Majesty, the Emperor of all Russia, I hereby testify. Mr. Shulsky's last will and testament were prepared several years ago in the presence of Zaslav Fedorov, Esquire, that is, myself. My last will and testament recorded in the year of our Lord 1888. In the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Uh, let's just hear him out, shall we? Therefore, my first irrevocable wish is to appoint as executrix of this will my daughter, Ligia Schulzka. Immediately after my death, an inventory shall be conducted in full accordance with the law. After completing the inventory, all my personal movables will be sold at public auction. And let the funds raised thereby be donated on the anniversary of my death to the beggars near the cemetery. The administration of the remainder of my fortune I leave, without restriction, to the person of my daughter, Ligia. <sighs> I'm not even getting a teaspoon. All movables and immovables relating to the family enterprise I entrust to the care and administration of my daughter. I do not prescribe a method of administering them. I merely offer her one piece of advice. I wish that the business should be conducted with modesty, prudence and honesty, as I have conducted it my whole life. A joker to the very end. <laughs> to my brother-in-law and oldest friend, Alexander Voronin, I wish to leave the following. My collection of muskets and two revolvers dating to the uprising in memory of our first meeting. Stasio, I will have plenty to do in my retirement. Enjoy your retirement. Now, Mr. Fedorov, what did my father leave my mother? Hmm? Victor, be serious. Nothing. There is a special item reflecting the absolute lack of any bequest to my former spouse, Nadia Fyodorovna Voronina. Um, yeah, I'm wary of keep feeding the pride. Uh... But I'm going to do it here. <laughs> Congratulate them both. I wish you success with your business and your hunting. I'm going to have something to eat before heading off. Just a moment yet, Mr. Shulsky. Your name is also mentioned here. <laughs> a last-minute plot twist. I would also like to come to the aid of my only son, Victor Shulsky. By entrusting him with the use of my personal black grimoire. In the hope that he will be able to make good use of it. This is my last will and testament. Carry it out solemnly, though you may have found it burdensome. However, this last bequest poses a certain problem. I don't know where it is. Yes, it certainly does. And what is that, may I ask? I am not in possession of this grimoire. The late Mr. Shulsky used it up until his death. Yet no one left it with me after his passing. Meaning it's disappeared? Did father have his grimoire on him at the time of his death? It was only because of the grimoire that we could identify him at all. What actually happened? How did he die? A building collapsed on top of him. I don't know any other way of putting it. Uh, 
Okay, let's go with the second one for now. A building. It collapsed on top of him. How? How did this happen? It was a day like any other. Papa had gone for his habitual walk. Every Tuesday and Thursday, he'd take a stroll to get some space, as he put it. When he didn't come back for a long time, I got the bad feeling something had happened. Then... We rode there together. An entire wall of a tenement had collapsed. There were three victims, including Stasio, who had the bad luck to simply be walking by. To see him there in that condition, it's beyond description. The Grimoire. Could someone have taken it? Perhaps, in all that confusion? But why would anyone want Papa's Grimoire? An ordinary person won't use it. Would the Tarmator just happen to be passing by? Father had all his knowledge in there. But I don't know if it would be useful to someone other than him. I don't even know why he left it to me. I'm sure Stasio had a reason. Where did it happen? Where was this building? The southern part of Shudmieście, not far from the police station. Anyway, you can miss it. Of all the possibilities, this was the death that fate prepared for him. I foresaw a slightly more pleasant end for him myself. I doubt even he deserved such a horrible death. Those might be the kindest words you've ever said on the subject of a father. How typical of a sort of person to keep a portrait in his study of a family that was only a family on canvas. Not long after the painting was done, he got divorced, ruined in Yejitsis, and kicked out his son. But there the portrait hangs, as if family meant anything at all. I don't know what exactly happened with Aboritsa, but I know that Papa felt guilty. You don't want to forgive him even now that he's gone? The dead need no forgiving. And as for forgetting, I don't know how. It's just a shame about the Grimoire. What do you intend to do? Um... Let's ask about Mordecai again. And Mordecai Chayat. Could that be a lead? I don't think so. He worked with father, but he left more than a year ago. I don't know why. He was an assistant at our, well, my store. Do you know where I might find him? Sadly, no. Do you have any other ideas? And where are father's things at the moment? You're standing at the very center of his kingdom. Not everything has been sorted through yet, but you go right ahead. And the store? I should check the too. I've started stock taking there to distract myself, and I don't want you to go in there before I've finished. As you wish. I think we have to look for the answer in the place where it happened. With your sight, you can make out more in those ruins than I, or uncle, or detective could. This is a good lead, but is it the only one? Father evidently knew a certain Ivan Konechkin. Have you heard anything about him? Konechkin? No, doesn't ring a bell. All sorts of people came to Papa's store. That doesn't mean every one of them might know something about the Grimoire. That's true. You've got your work cut out for you. Okay, well, I think we've got a little plan of action now. Now at least I can see how little I know. Maybe these scraps of information will lead me somewhere. Well, now that we know what's got to be figured out, forgive me, my darlings. I'm going to give my old bones a rest. I'll see you out.
Goodbye, Uncle. And, uh, Ligia. I'm sorry it happened this way. That I wasn't close by. The most important thing is you're here now. There we go, so we have have a quest. We have to go and find out what's happened to this black grimoire. But I think we'll follow that up next time. So I'll just say thanks very much for watching this episode of the Thaumaturge. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying it too. It's uh, felt a little bit like, what, what am I doing here? But now we have, you know, we have a, a mystery. What happened to father? Where's the grimoire? Um, yeah, let's kick things off a little bit, which is good, good fun. Um, you know, if you have enjoyed it, if you could hit the thumbs up button, that'd be great. Leave me a comment as well. Let me know what you think about the game so far and where it's headed and everything else. And if you're watching this and haven't already subscribed to the channel, it would be great if you could do that. So thanks very much, and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.